much for the love. Lincoln's after me secret formula, and I need you to conceal it. But Mr. Crab, there's nothing in the whole restaurant. Oh, yeah. Well, let's just go squidward. Like, why me? Ah! <laughs> What the heck? This is this is strange. Why is the light off? This is a crossover. Oh my god! This is a crossover with the Game Attacker for this review of Mario Brothers. Now what is Mario Brothers you may ask? Well, it's an arcade game made by Nintendo back in 1983 starring Mario from Donkey Kong and introducing his brother Luigi who would later go on to star with Mario in many other great games including the legendary Super Mario Brothers on the Nintendo Famicom and NES. Ah, 1983. What an interesting year for Nintendo. We got many games like, well, Mario Brothers for an example and DK3, which a very underrated game. There was also a time where Nintendo had a Christ load of monitors, which led to the idea of Punch-Out. But for this review, we'll be taking a look at the arcade version of Mario Brothers. Mario Bros. A game where it's best played with two people. And rightfully so, since the game can be enjoyed cooperatively where both players have to work together, or competitively where each player tries to get a better score than one another. The game is pretty fun with one player, but if you have someone available, the game shines its brightest. In the game, you play as a plumber named Mario, and he has to keep the sewers clean and creature free. And to do so, he has to knock them off the platforms by flipping them over and kicking them. If you choose to play with a second player, Mario's little brother Luigi joins the battle. Kids, this was before Smash Brothers was invented. He can help Mario clean out the sewers, but like most younger siblings, he might tend to get in the way sometimes. The enemies in the game range from turtles to ice blocks. I guess the sewers are cold enough for them to last long. How to kill the enemies? Well, for turtles, you flip them over and kick them. For crabs, you must hit them twice to flip them, and then you can kick them. As for the flies, you have to wait for them to land in order to flip them over. As for the ice blocks, you just hit them underneath. You gotta do it really fast because they'll make the floor slippery and icy, and you do not want that. However, if you take too long to kill an enemy, it'll flip itself back up and will be even harder to kill, so don't waste time. Speaking of wasting time, if you wait around long enough, a green fireball will spawn on the side of the screen and fly to the other side at top speed. A slower red fireball also comes out occasionally, so stay alert. Every time an enemy is knocked off the screen, a coin will pop out of one of the two pipes on the top of the screen and can be collected for bonus points. Speaking of bonuses, there are bonus stages that occur every few levels or so that require you to collect as much coins as you can. However, you only have 20 seconds to nap the coins. But what if you only have 19.9 .9 seconds to live? Well, tough luck, buddy. You may think that this game can get a little hairy, so that's where the POW block comes in. Hitting this block will flip over every and any enemy standing on a platform. The POW blocks are useful, but they only can be used a certain amount of times before disappearing. Once they do, they won't reappear until after a bonus stage. The POW block debuts in this game and would later be featured as a regular Mario item starting with 1988's Super Mario Bros. 2. Remember when I mentioned about the slippery ground? I'm not making this up. Even on regular platforms, they're slippery, as if somebody has waxed the floors. One day we'll find out who this man is. It was me! Why, oh, you little... 
The controls are self-explanatory. The joystick moves left and right, and you have only one button for your jumping. Just like in Castlevania and Ghosts and Goblins, Red Luigi and Green Mario cannot change directions when jumping, so you have to plan your moves accordingly. For those uptight about these mechanics, Nintendo did release a later version for their Famicom Disk System called... Here we go... Kaya Takita Mario Bros. Which allowed for changing directions while jumping. Whenever Mario or Luigi dies, they respawn on the top of the screen, descending upon a floating platform. This gimmick would later be reused in the Super Smash Bros. games. Speaking of dying, the problem with this game is that there's no continue option, which means if one player dies, they have to wait for the other one to finish their game. The game opens with a rendition of Mozart's A Little Night Music. I don't know why they never bothered to create their own theme for the game, but it's a nice little ditty that gets the job done. Nintendo did, however, create a theme song for the Famicom version. Overall, the game's sound effects and music work well for it, and I particularly like the running sound effects for Mario and Luigi. The graphics in this game are top-notch. The usage of the colors make the game look very appealing to the eye, especially when you consider that the game takes place in a sewer. <laughs> So what did I think of Mario Brothers? It's one of Nintendo's greatest games and one of the best co-op games ever, right up there with Contra, Chippendale, and Goof Troop. If you want to play the original arcade version for yourself, it can be purchased on the Nintendo Switch via the Arcade Archives for only $8. So what did you think, Game Attacker? My opinion on Mario Brothers. It's a very fun game. And a really important game. If it wasn't for Mario Bros, we would not have Super Mario Bros, or any Mario game after that that we all know and love. When you see coins and pipes or Koopa Troopas in later games like Mario Odyssey or Super Mario 64, it all came from this basic arcade game. Mario Bros Arcade may not be the first game to introduce Luigi, but it did bring a little bit of recognition to the character. A lot more than the Game & Watch version. Mario Brothers started the Mario saga that we know. And nobody says anything about it. That's the worst part. Nobody talks about it. I know it's an arcade game, but when you see videos about classic Mario games, it's usually the SNES games or the N64 games. But give Mario Bros. some credit. Give it all the credit. Let me tell you something. When you see this arcade game, bow down to your knees and thank the game for what it has brought into this world. Thank you, Mario Bros.